I have nothing. I would assume that um, the people here would speak under, or probably going to speak under the public hearing. And I'll go to the approval minutes of June 3rd, 2021. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay, well, we'll open the public hearing. First public hearing is request by Donald Livy, owner, and Minnow uh, Hom, and with Square with M Square Engineering LLC as agent to petition the Natural Resources Committee for a zoning classification change from floodplain to non-floodplain and wetland to non-wetland in the Shoreland District per section 7.1300 of the Ozaki County Shoreland and Floodplain Zoning Ordinance. I won't go into reading all the uh, definitions here. Uh, but this is affecting the following real estate described in the town of Cedarburg, and we're talking about tax key number 03005050000, period 00, and 03005030300, period 00. And, uh, this would be um, the Mud Creek flood, uh, flood uh, the recognizing the results of the Mud Creek flood, floodplain study. So, to open that up, can I speak to this at all? Quick overview. Pardon? Do you want me to give a quick little overview or? Uh, whatever. Whatever is necessary. Well, our, our department received, as you as you see, a zoning reclassification request for a proposed subdivision in the town of Cedarburg. Uh, today, we're here to uh, take action on three items regarding this develop, potential development. One is that there was an unstudied floodplain on the property. It was a zone A floodplain. So it's been studied. And as a result, the floodplain has uh, shrunk quite a bit. I provided that information in your packet. I showed, showed the before and after. A second item is a wetland delineation was done by sewer pack. And as a result of the wetland delineation, there were some areas that are no longer identified as, as wetland. And the third request is to place some fill in the floodplain for access to the property. There's at the end of Brant Drive, there's that's the access point. There's a there's like a lane there now already. And to the left of the lane, there's a small well, there's a wetland area and this drive would uh, have access have to fill a small portion of the wet hybrid soil area so for us today we're looking at recognizing the floodplain study change the mapping we're looking at changing the mapping for the wetland delineation then we're looking to uh, mr levy is here this morning he's looking for approval to place fill in the wetland the DNR has approved of the uh, project thus far, and the Army Corps of Engineers has also signed off on, on the bill. So this issue has met all the requirements of Ozaki County as far as coming to the public hearing? Yes. Okay. Open the public that. hearing to the public if somebody wants to speak to the issue. <coughs> Identify yourself. Anybody? Nobody wants to speak. To me. Yeah, this would be your time if you had any. I know you had mentioned you were here for the. For the You're call. talking Cedarburg. Hmm? You're talking Cedarburg. I'm not for the one for Cedarburg. I'm for the poor one. Oh, okay. Don't make a problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody understands. Well, everybody that they know that this is their first, so all in tone. Oh, uh, just a, um, one moment to, for clarification here, though. Um, the one for the town of Port is the minor land division, and it's not part of the public hearing. So I guess my question to you, Barb, is: Should she have spoken under public comment, or are you going to allow her to speak under the uh, 
under the uh, action to speak item. under which one under the action item it would be um under planning and parks and that would be number two on the minor land division right which is not part of this public hearing so Did you want to speak to, uh, i mean uh, she didn't the understand letter says the it's part of the public hearing i'm sorry which one are you here are you here to, for the okay. okay it's not part of the public hearing it's down on the minor land division isn't that correct, right, Andy? Because there's nothing for the town of Fort. I'm not involved in that one. Right. So that's under the minor land division, which is an action item. Right. So I don't know if you want to allow them to speak when the time comes up, just because of a misunderstanding. Okay. But you think they could have spoken at the. Uh... Under public comment, had we realized that. I would like to let people speak to I mean, that's certainly up to you and the committee. If they have no objections, I would say. Well, they can speak to it when we get to it. All right. right. Sure. Okay. So hang in there. When we get to that item, we will to speak on that. Then should we close the public hearing number one, since there's no comments? Okay. And then we'll open public hearing number two, amendment to chapter seven of the Ozaki County Code of Ordinances, Shoreland Floodplain Zoning Ordinance to adopt and incorporate by reference the FEMA letter NAP revision, case number 19-05-5425P and co corresponding revised insurance study, effective date August 25th, uh, 2021. Speak to that at all, or sure. Uh, this is actually going back several years. Actually, probably about five years ago, there was a project in the city of Cedarburg. It was for a 29-acre subdivision known as Glen at Cedar Creek, I believe it is. And back then, uh, through the city, they had placed roughly about 1,600 cubic yards of fill in the floodplain. And they also did some grading in the floodplain, and they did, I believe, some floodplain storage in that area. And this was all approved prior to the project going in. And as a result, then the floodplain has actually decreased by about a tenth of a foot, the elevation of the floodplain. And also the floodway has narrowed somewhat. So now what happened is FEMA now recognized the change and now they're changing the floodplain map to records to change. Anyone here want to speak to that issue? Hearing none, I think we'll close that public hearing and we'll go on to land and water management department action item ordinance shoreland and floodplain zoning map amendment town of Cedarburg section five. And that should be in your packet. Well, I would entertain any questions regarding the project. Again, this is going back to the weapon delineation, the floodplain uh, study that was completed, and then the field for, for the wet map. And I, I did mention in my staff report the seven items of concern regarding placement to fill in a floodplain. If you have any questions regarding that, I, I did speak with M squared engineering regarding those items. Manel Tom is here this morning. And certainly as a department, there's no major adverse impacts to, to the wetland area. And, and Manel also provided information in that respect. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. So it's in compliance with all regulations of Ozark yes. County. That's what we're always looking for. So right. that's all things have been met. Somebody want to make a motion on this? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, just for clarification, please. Just say, just say opposed so that who's ever opposed. online can, can hear that. You at least have. Should I be naming these two? <laughs> you should. There's only two. Oh, but, but, <laughs> right. Rob Hull. By Thank Rob, seconded by Natalia. We're stuck with this today. That's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Ping pong. 
Okay, we're going to move on to ordinance amending section 7.0201 of the shoreland and floodplain zoning ordinance to adopt letter of map revision 19-05-5425P and associated floodplain insurance study. This is all like housekeeping, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I would call it. Exactly. And as long as it's all in compliance with Ozaki County's regulations, unless there's somebody that has some opposition to it's it. It's all in compliance. It's all in compliance. So could we entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second by Professor Holman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Planning and parks. Go back to that first one, right? right. Action item Minor Land Division, Donald Levy, owner, uh, N61 W6058 Columbia Road, Cedarburg, and Minnow Han, applicant or agent of N19 W6719 Commerce Course, Cedarburg. Requesting a land division approval for a minor land division by plot. This is parcel number 03005050000, period 00. Total acreage to be divided approximately 83.60 acres. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carried. Just, just as a clarification, um, uh, <laughs> that, that the approval was with conditions of the staff report. Okay, which was included in our packet, right? Correct. Uh, those conditions are are both agreed. Yeah. I guess we just assume that and. I just just for clarification, I just want to make sure that uh, the conditions are part of the approval. I do I do note that with the in the motion. Thank you. Then we'll move on to this minor land division. Seth Amarnik and Samantha Amarnik. I don't know if I'm pronouncing those right. Owner, applicant, and agent. Fifty eight hundred six miles thousand. Requesting a land division approval for a minor land division by certified survey map in accord with section 7.1400. Uh, this is parcel number 0700909-00 period dash total acreage to be divided at approximately 58.972. This is the one where if somebody wanted to speak to this, this the, the issue that you wanted to hear you at this time. What are they exactly proposing to do? Andrew? Um, yes, this, this is a land division uh, to um, uh, divide the, the land that was just described. Um, it will be a, um, it, it, the land division is within the shoreland area. So therefore it, it comes before us. Um, the land division is gonna create five lots uh, ranging from uh, one acre up to 51 acres. So again, the reason it's before us. Um, we did look at it, this has been before the town of Port Washington, uh, as well as coming before you this morning. We did look at the land use plans. It is, it is consistent with both the uh, county and the town's land use plan. Um, the, uh, the zoning will, will follow, the, the zoning change at the town of uh, Port Washington will follow the land division, uh, which, is the, which is the normal process. Um, there is uh, proposed access off of County Road KW, so that's a county road. Um, so there will be um, a required county highway access permit and they are working with the uh, Public Works Highway Department to to finalize the that um, uh, highway access off of County Highway W. 
Um, and uh, I would just then add that uh, no objections to to the land division, um, but approval with the uh, conditions as mentioned. Um, in in particular, uh, showing the uh, shoreland area on the plat, um, uh, uh, concurrence on the uh, the wetland wetlands that have um, been referenced, and um, and then the other the other notes as. Uh, according to the conditions in the report, including um, Ozaki County as a approving authority and necessary signatures. Was there anybody else that wanted to speak? I mean, just for just for a point of clarification that if there is any members of the public that want to speak to this, this is similar to a public comment. So you can get up and you can announce who you are and you can speak whether you're in support or against, but not be part of the discussion. So if there's anybody that does want to speak before you make the motion. Yes. My name is. If you'd like to just stand up so the rest of the committee can see you and tell us who you are. Hi. I'm Alana Coffin. I live on the property north of this um, on KW. And I have a concern. I, I guess I'm against it. I have a concern with the access off KW. It is a very busy highway with lots of semi traffic, constant traffic. Um, where they're putting the plots is on a hill. So if the driveways, and they're going to be very steep because it's also down, I think it's dangerous. I don't think it's a good idea. It's also farmland that's being used that needs to continue to be used. So I'm against the division and make it I'm Joy Hayward. I'm adjacent to that property. I feel the same as her. Um, I feel it should stay agricultural because it is farmland. I'm a farmer myself. Um, I can't understand how you can allow houses to be built on there when the property straight across from my house has been condemned for contaminated water from the fly ash bill from the electric company. My water has been being tested for the last 10 years. I lost a neighbor to cancer. They took his property because of the fly ash. They couldn't get fresh water. I can't understand how you can make that a subdivision. I also am opposed to it being a subdivision. Or anybody else that wants to talk? I have a comment to both as being the landowner um, that I have the well on the property and I've also had the property tested for water and that there is no issue with the groundwater there. <clears throat> we are also outside of the um, the DNR's mapping for the contaminant area and also I've been in contact with the county for the highway division as far as driveway access and they have no issue with the driveway because they're at the proper footages apart based on their regulations is where basically I went to them and asked them where they would like the driveways to be put on my, my land division and they you know said this is where if you're going to do it we would like them to go. Yeah, I have another concern. You also, with the creek running through there, I've noticed you've got some old vehicles parked down by the creek. We've been working on that creek, trying to keep it clean so it doesn't get contaminated. But making it subdivision, are we going to have more problems with people parking garbage out in the field so it can drain into the creek? That's another concern we have. Um, Barb, I would. I would say from this point forward, this is for the committee to discuss. If you want to discuss any of these issues, it's up to you um, and move forward from there. Andrew's here certainly to address any of your concerns. Anyone else out there, because then we'll close it to the public, correct? Correct. Everyone had their say, because this will go to the committee then itself where you can participate. <clears throat> I guess I have a question. Andrew, you, you mentioned the town of uh, Port Washington. They, they voted to approve this? 
Uh, it's working through the town's uh, process, as I understand it, and, and our, our approval is conditional on their approval. So regardless, um, the, these usually happen simultaneously. So um, yeah, the town is, is um, taking it up and uh, that, that's my understanding. They did make some minor changes to the, um, to the plat CSM uh, with regard to um, uh, some of the lot acreage uh, changed slightly, et cetera. So there, there has been some changes at the, the town level and, and resubmitted, but it is working its way through the, the town process. Um, my understanding also, as, as the owner mentioned, uh, is that the highway department did not have any issues and, um, you know, as far as the county highway access. So, but that would be required again, one of the conditions that would be in order for us to uh, sign off on the final plat, uh, the uh, the owner would need to get that county highway access permit finalized. Uh, same with town of Port Washington approval, that would need to be finalized before the county would, would sign off. Okay, I have one question. How come we got a letter in the mail last week from the town board um, saying that they're gonna have a meeting on this? Ma'am, ma'am, you had your, I, I apologize, but you had your options, you had your chance to speak and that's all that's allowed on the public comment. You would have to contact Andrew or you would have to contact the town of Cork. You don't get you don't get the op opportunity to ask questions now while the committee decides discusses it. Okay, okay, so in other words, this is all cut and dry. Why even at the public meeting? It's not a public hearing. They're having the discussion on the meeting. You made your statement under under public comment. She allowed you to make a statement <laughs> under public comment under the item. But the questions back and forth don't happen here at the committee level. Correct, Barb? Correct. This is a time for the committee to, now to decide. And if you have any concerns from the town of court, you would have to address it with the town of court. Again, I, I would just reiterate our, our approval is conditional on the town of Port Washington. So that, that's typical and that, that's an ongoing uh, uh, process with the town. Well, I, I sympathize with the comments that uh, like to see it really agricultural. That's really not our, our concern. Our concern is to weigh everything here and you know, there's no water concerns. She's done the studies and stuff. So I, I see no reason. I'm, I'm going to continue with my, my motion to approve this. With the condition that's stated. All second. So they really have another chance at the township to talk to them because this isn't approved until. Okay. We have to yeah. answer that yeah. question. What Andrew was just stated. Yeah, if you if you approve it. On what the town does as far as zoning and changing and whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you approve it here this morning uh, with conditions, one of those conditions is approval by the town of Port Washington. So uh, if they end up uh changing or not approving um then uh you know we would not move obviously our our approval does not move forward then either so we would not um we would not sign off on the final csm plat until all the conditions are met one of those conditions being uh the town of port washington's approval so there will be probably uh additional meetings at the town of port washington as well No, no, I. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Andrew, what do the neighboring landowners receive in the in the notice? Did they receive this letter with all of the conditions? Uh, that lead le letter is available to them uh, either through the website or it's available at the office. We don't mail that letter, the staff staff report, but it is available to them, so they get a letter notifying them of this meeting and that the staff report is available to them uh, either by, visit by visiting the office or they can get it online uh, as the uh, NRC uh, information is posted. So that's part of the, the public record. Okay, so that letter goes out uh, 10 days, according to our ordinance, goes out 10 days uh, prior to, to this meeting.
your knowledge that has anybody questioned or called for that letter or the conditions and all of this that they've looked at this? You don't know. I, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, to your knowledge, has anybody actually asked for these the, the attachments that we've received? We have not had anybody ask or visit the office. Um, again, like I said, it is available. We don't um, obviously know if they visit the website and get it downloaded from the website, but it is available publicly as soon as the, it gets posted. So, but nobody nobody visited the office or left message uh, that I'm aware of. Any other comments here? Could you email us a copy of the letter that they received? Uh, sure. If you give me a second too, I can, I, I can do that. And I can also share it here if that helps at all. Um, it basically is a notice just of the land division, the description of the land and, uh, the notice of this meeting when it's scheduled that that's essentially the letter, but, um, let me see if I can just find it quickly and I can, e I, yes, I can email it out. Okay. Do you know, yeah, I think it's 64 in our 64. Yeah, we have it. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I think I included it with, I think it was included with one of land divisions. I'm not sure it was included with the other one, but that's the same type of letter that goes out for, for all land divisions. Uh, 10 days prior, it goes to all landowners that, well, according to our ordinance, it's technically uh, directly adjacent to the land division, but we go a little bit beyond that. We do 300 feet so that it does pick up lots often uh, divided by either navigable stream or waterway or roads. So uh, it's anybody that's within a 300 foot buffer of the land division that gets the letter. And that's all, that's all per our ordinance. I thought I had read that. It's on page 64 in our packet here. Yeah, it's just on page 64. Yeah, it's on page 64. Hearing none, motion carried. And we'll go on to number three of an action item, submittal and acceptance of a U.S. Forest Service Great Lakes Restoration Initiative Forest Restoration Grant for nat native tree planting in Ozaki County Coastal Parks Project Area. Want to speak to that, Andrew? Sure, I can give a, a brief uh, uh, description. Um, this is similar to uh, past grants that we've submitted. I think uh, we've received now four U.S. Forest Service grants, uh, similar in nature, but this is a different project area. Uh, if you will, it's it's going to be our coastal county parks. There is an emphasis uh, in the current RFP from the Forest Service to look at both coastal areas for reforestation. Uh, as well as areas um, along uh, uh, stream and riparian corridors. So uh, our focus here is the coastal park areas. So that would include Vermont, Lion's Den, and then uh, future Clay Bluffs area uh, for, for forestry restoration. Um, similar to, to past uh, grants will be, uh, there, there's funding to support uh, conservation core activity to help us plant trees. Uh, private contractor. Um, this will be the scope will include both um, small seedling planting as well as large trees um, in those three areas, which we're referring to as a county coastal park area project area. Um, and I get again uh, emphasis the uh, total budget here uh, or the total grant award would be for 200,000. Uh, and there is a required match, which was is supported by um, both. Uh, pending and existing funding from um, various sources, uh, both both grant and um, uh, also the uh, the damage funds that we received out at Lion's Den um, for the vandalism. So we're leveraging those matching funds and, and hopefully um, be able to get a, a larger project and, and do a little bit more with regard to uh, tree planting in those three areas. Nothing to do with the county levy. 
Uh, no, there is some there is some in kind staff time as usual and uh, in kind travel and supplies. Uh, it's fairly fairly minor actually. Um, most of it, it, as you mentioned, is supported by uh, both pending and existing funding. The the vast majority uh, is coming from that vandalism settlement uh, as our match. So correct. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay, now we're back to land water management department. Um, Management Financial Information Report, Plan and Water Management Report. Does anybody have any questions for Andy on that? I assume that's you. Yes. Way through. <laughs> the only thing I would add is we had our soil health field day last week and it went very well. We had about 80 folks attend. Ended up being a really nice day. And we had Eric Silva from UW uh, talk about interceding and, and um, Planting Green, she did a really nice job. And we also had Ann Piper from the UW on Farms Research Network. And she talked about our, our interceding trials that we're doing throughout the state. It was really, it was a nice event. We're looking, we had a Clean Farm Families meeting uh, Tuesday night this week, and we're looking at another field day probably in October. Okay. Yeah. And our interceder planter is out still. Uh, another farmer is using it to Interceded into his corn to improve his uh, quantity of uh, forage for silage. Are there any questions about anything? I know I'm always hitting on the soil health things, but certainly we have a lot of other things to work on. I, so. I just have a question. I, I yeah. said, how, how are the farmers faring this year with the lack of rain? You know, my opinion from what I've seen is there are some fields where when the farmers planted, it was dry and some of the crops didn't germinate real well. Overall, I would say the crops are looking rather well. Um, I think the beans are, I think we got the rain just in the nick of time. Yeah, I think there was a couple of wheat fields that were hurt by the drought that if we wouldn't have gotten rain the day we did, right. we would have lost those wheat fields, but we did get them in time. There's like some high and low spots that are a little iffy, but in general, it's actually been a good year. Yeah, it's a really good. You could see some of the knolls were right. extremely stressed. So I personally, just from what I see in my area, it looks like it, it, it uh, came in time and we're doing pretty well. Yeah, we've been blessed with a timely rain, that's for sure. Not, not being a farmer, it seems like, from what I've read, like the dress, like they get out of the fields in the dry soil, right? And then when the rain hits. Right. Like, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not a great year. And just a comment on the interceding, I get the Wisconsin State Farmer and absolutely across the state of Wisconsin, this is the going thing. There is not one week that there isn't an article from somewhere of the people pursuing this as far as taking care of the land and the water issues. So um, I'm glad we're participating and that we're a good part of it. I should mention too that Agriview has reached out to our department and they have asked that once a month that I send them information about the Pink Farm families. That's, I did include the links, I think, in this meeting packet. So it's it's kind of nice they're featuring the Pink Farm families and some of the work that's been done. I never thought I'd say this, but uh, the no, no Till Farmer magazine is kind of interesting. There you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've received several. Real sincere thank yous from people. That, well, that's really a good magazine. Thanks for getting that. We didn't know it existed. We like to hear the farmer testimonials. So yeah, yeah that's good. Like the one thing is <laughs> like I put a probe in like four inches deep, like where there was no till, and, and the temp ground temperature was you know like seventy something, and then out in the field it was you know like ninety four. So there's you know to the point right. where at a certain temperature these crops or the the, the plants kind of have to stop. Yeah, at about 90 degrees, and the microbial activity in the soil doesn't. Yeah. And we have our demonstration on what the next uh, board meeting of the, what is it, the 21st? 
We have a good turnout that everybody realizes. I mean, we as natural resources, we've been at this for quite a while. I've been to several meetings and things like mm -hmm. that, but I don't know the whole board. And as Ozaki County, many people think of it as not as agricultural because of the south end being urban, but we do have a lot of land in the north end of the county that definitely can participate in this. Oh, absolutely. And on the south end as well. Well, there's still some in areas. different areas on the south end, but major north of 33, there's a lot of land. So our goal on the 21st is to have the soil health trailer from USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service and, and show soils, uh, put about an inch of rain water over uh, the outside. Yeah, the idea would be to actually meet outside and do the soil health trailer, show the difference in infiltration and runoff and the difference in you know cropping scenarios. Because that really explains why we're doing what it is we're doing. I'm hoping that that really hits home, that people understand we're doing no-till and cover crops so that over the years we can change the soil structure and so on and get the water to actually infiltrate. And that soil health trailer will demonstrate that really well. And then go inside, Matt Winker then was, I was gonna help him with a PowerPoint um, to show what he's been doing to improve soil health. And then uh, Mike Paulus was gonna be there to talk about the group as well. I'm looking forward so, to that. I'm hoping I can make that meeting. Uh, any more questions for Andy? Do you, have, do you have any new farmers that have joined this year or need the interseeder equipment and everything for, compared to last year? Yeah, it's you know that's what makes the makes the group uh, successful. Really, is there's new farmers. There's a farmer near uh, Harrington Beach State Park. He did no-till 40 acres for the first time ever, and he put cover crops down for the first time. Uh, there's another farmer in Belgium who's used the inner cedar. He put in some, it's called Saros uh, Sudan uh, sorghum grass, Sudan sorghum. And he's using that for forage. Yeah, there's more and more people every year trying it. And to me, that's the, the fun of it. Any questions for Andy? I do enjoy it. Thank you, Andy. Yep. Then was we'll along to uh, the University Extension Office Management Financial Information Report Extension Report. Is there anybody here to represent? That is here. Uh, there she is. Yeah. Okay, good. So, can join us today? Sure. I'll give you a little bit of on what I've been up to. Um, I've been doing, we did our tractor safety class that was in the report. And I think I talked about that. And so, we've been doing the exams on farm which has been really awesome because I've been able to get on farm and speak to a lot of the farmers and meet with the youth. And I was just very happy to hear we've gotten great feedback about some of our online virtual programs that we did this year. One of the farms actually from Ozaki County pulled me aside and said like, thank you so much. We as a family have been able to attend more extension programs this year than all of the extension programs combined in the past. So that was a really great piece of feedback that we received. And Happy to hear it. So we're going to continue some of those virtual programs. We are going back to in-person programs. I know this year I'm excited to do more farm management. We're not doing in-person programs until September, but we do have programs in September. We're doing a virtual online part of the coffee chat series that has been in. So that next one is next Monday. Um, those have been really great. They're Monday mornings. Uh, once a month we talk um, all sorts of things we talk about. Farms, we talk about families, the next one's on um, traditions today and tomorrow, and then the one in August on dinner conversations to have on the family table. So they've been really good. I've seen great attendance from Ozaki County for those. It's a statewide program, but at least a third of the attendance has been from Ozaki Washington County, which is, I think is great because um, traditionally that's been a hard program to get folks from these counties too. So I'm happy to see that. Uh, the other big piece that I'm working on is the mission vision values module that I received the grant for. So right now I'm, I've got the educational material. It needs to be submitted to our instructional design team by the end of July. And then that is gonna be developed. It's gonna be both looked at from an instructional design lens and then also a graphic design lens. And part of that grant is to preview that in front of farmers. So put it online, preview it in front of farmers, get feedback, do some farmer interviews, 
And hopefully if that goes well, if people like the way that material is presented, we'll go for a bigger grant in November and hopefully this is a $50,000 grant to produce more strategic leadership and farm management material um, in a more interactive, engaging online format that people can do at home whenever they feel like it, but still connect to me as the educator. That's my big summer project this year. Sounds like you're a busy lady. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Which is good. I love it. Um, the other piece of, I know what we talked a little bit about how farmers are doing. Um, the only thing I would say to watch is the fact that feed prices, because currently beans are really high right now, that um, feed prices could become an issue for our dairies. However, a lot of folks still have a lot of uh, silage and dairies from last year, so we're doing okay right now. That's really the only thing yeah. I'm concerned about is feed prices, but everything else is, we made it through last year, okay, I think. For those of so. It's been a better year. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Keep up the good work Register of these land information that's in your packet. I don't think there's anybody here to represent that, but those, the line in there and the report, what appears to be happening is there's just not enough inventory of houses and lots to meet the demand. I think that says it all, right? Have any questions on that? We'd have to come back. Okay, we'll move on to planning of parks. Continue. Discussion. Use of county park tennis courts, Vermont and Wabadonia for pickleball. Andrew. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm hopefully you can see this. I'm just sharing my screen. Um, um, hopefully you can see the, the shared screen. Uh, anyway, I, I've received um, several residents has have contacted me about uh, striping our tennis our existing tennis courts to allow for a pickleball. Um, what I'm showing on the screen now is kind of how that's done. So there's just uh, extra extra line work that's put down. The, the court is actually smaller for pickleball. So I had several residents approach me from both uh, the city of Mequon near Vermont Park for those tennis courts. Uh, that's what prompted this. But in the past, I've also received a similar request uh, up in Fredonia for the use of the Wabadonia uh, County Park tennis courts as well. Um, so I wanted to get the committee's thoughts on this. Uh, I have had uh, interested groups in both um, with the desire to do this. The um, expense for this is relatively minor. Um, as, as I'm showing on the graphic here, uh, there's just additional striping put in the existing tennis courts to allow for this to occur. They do use the existing net, although it's not technically regulation, the pickleball net is uh, technically slightly lower, um, but but they weren't asking for that at this time. And um, there's other ways to um, to split up the tennis courts. But uh, essentially, it would be uh, you know a little bit of our our staff labor and uh, some uh, relatively minor supplies cost for getting the asphalt tape necessary to stripe it. I guess the biggest issue that I wanted to uh, discuss though with the committee is that, um, like I said, there is an interesting interested group both at Vermont and in the past there has been at Wabadonia. Um, but we also do have um, a very uh, consistent play uh, for, t for the tennis courts. And there is a group that um, plays uh, tennis there fairly regularly. Uh, I believe at Vermont, there's a, a informal kind of women's group that plays there. Um, and so they have expressed some concerns that if we do uh, stripe and allow for pickleball, that they'll have a harder time getting court time to play tennis. So um, obviously there's a limited number of courts, both at Vermont and Wabadonia. Those are our only two county parks with, with tennis courts currently. So that, that this would um, potentially apply to one or both. Um, so there is, there is uh, some residents have reached out to me with a little bit of concern that if if we do allow or, or stripe it for pickleball that they'll have a hard time getting court time. 
So the only thing I can say about that, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit later in the next item about what we've been doing with reservations. Um, obviously there's, there's limited courts, um, so we can only um, you know, provide what we have with the existing courts. Um, but I thought if there, you know, I, I have no, um, the, the supplies and labor costs are fairly, to, fairly minor to, uh, to allow for pickleball. So I really don't have an issue. And I guess if there is conflicts uh, with the two user groups, uh, pickleball versus tennis, um, that we could set up a reservation system for the court so that uh, people could reserve it. We could either do that just on a reservation basis, free of charge or, or charge for it if that becomes an issue. Um, again, that's, that's one of the ways I can see to address kind of usage uh, for time people could reserve the court if they're, they're so inclined. So um, I'll talk about our reservation system uh, going next, but, but uh, that seems to be you know, the major concern, I'm not really all that concerned about the, uh, the materials or labor costs to, um, to actually stripe the court. And that, that would be all we would propose. Um, like I said, the actual tennis net is slightly higher than pickleball, but we are not proposing to, to um, purchase or put in new nets. They would just use the existing net and um, stripe it accordingly. So I don't know if the committee has any thoughts on that or concerns or um, or other ways that we might consider uh, managing or, or if you just um, maybe perhaps don't like the idea of the, the shared use, so. Um, presently, is it first come, first serve? Is that how the, I mean, the- Yeah, well, yes. All, all the courts are first come, first serve as it is presently. Um, obviously, the, the only allowable use is tennis right now. Um, I mean, they can play pickleball, but they don't have the striping necessary really to um, to play, um, you know, appropriately. We have had people in the past, uh, you know, have badminton uh, and using the tennis courts. So generally, that's been allowed. We don't we don't allow people to use it for for soccer or foot, um, you know, hacky sack or things like that as well, which aren't very common. But yeah, first come first serve. I think there's less usage there than on the southern end of the county. So the conflict would probably be in the, in the Mequon area at Vermont. So yeah, yeah I would agree. Familiar. I would agree with that. Um, we did have a very consistent tennis group that used to play at Wabadonia in the past. Um, that has weaned a little bit. There still is a lot of, there still is tennis play, um, but, but the usage at Vermont is much higher. Because obviously we want the best usage possible, but we want people to be satisfied with that. If it doesn't interfere with the tennis, like you're saying, now the conflict between the two groups, I would say it'd be a good thing to give it a try, if nothing else. Comments here? Yeah, I support that. Um, I don't play pickleball, but I'm hearing more and more about people playing pickleball, yes. and I have a good friend who is a lifelong tennis player who is now almost you know solely playing pickleball instead of tennis so um i would be in favor of this and i suggest that maybe we try it on one of the courts and you know start off with that and see how that goes yeah i i appreciate that and that was exactly my thought is to stripe just one of our courts and see how that goes and um we can also kind of regulate or not regulate but monitor the usage and, and see if they're you know, if there needs to be any other steps taken to uh, Maybe either. Maybe the tennis players will try it out and decide they like pickleball better and you know, advocate for more pickleball sports. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that that's been my, as of late, you know, I mean, all these things go in ebbs and flows as far as um, recreational play, but I would say that there does seem to be quite uh, an interest in pickleball. And inch creates a migration of pickleball anyway. As they get older, they don't want to have to run around the courts right. much. So right. I, I agree, and I, I think we think of that, but I think your idea of still one court is a good idea. I, still, I don't want, I don't think tennis players should feel entitled that they've got more rights to the court than the pickleball players do. I think it's we have equal access. Do we have two courts up at Abadonia? 
could you do one there and one in uh, Vermont? I mean, that, you, yeah. that was exactly my thought to, to try the striping um, one court in each of the parks. And then um, we, I can bring it back and report out how it's going uh, if we get comments or, or concerns. And um, but that was that was my thought to stripe one court at each park. I agree. It's an offering from something else, and if there's people out there that want to use it and it creates good use, that would be wonderful. And like Natalia said, it could change from some tennis players going to pick up one. And we'll probably get some feedback if there's people complaining. It's like, why are those? Right. Yeah. Any other discussion on that? You want to go on to a presentation on? Um, online Ozarki County Park System Reservation System. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank, first of all, thank you for those comments and um, we'll, we'll proceed in that way with the pickleball. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk this morning and I have a short PowerPoint that I'll share on my screen um, about our new online reservation system for the parks. Um, we're, it's still a little bit of a work in progress, but it is up and running and I wanted to share what we're doing. Um, this has been in the works for a long time. We've been having an um, ongoing discussion, I guess, and, and issues with online payment. Um, we've resolved some of that, um, although it's still a work in progress. Um, we also had hoped to uh, do this through our existing golf course software, which has obviously online reservations for the golf course. And part of our agreement with them was is that they were would expand it and, and look at adding um, for our parks reservation system, but that has been um, ongoing for three years now, and we just haven't gotten over the, the hump, so to speak, with, with getting that functional. So um, I, I first want to mention, I guess, kudos. Uh, our intern, uh, Brittany Hahn, uh, actually uh, helped a great deal in doing research, searching out companies that provide kind of online reservations. Um, the different uh, payment systems and uh, expense to the county, et cetera, and, and then also develop the site. So with that, I'll um, share my screen and, and share a PowerPoint uh, that we put together just to, um, to give you a little bit of feeling um, about, about what we're doing with this. And, and like I said, it, it is a work in progress, but um, so, uh, yeah, Brittany, Brittany did a great job on researching and we ended up with a company uh, called Plano. Um, uh, so this is an online booking system and it is intended to uh, really function to uh, serve all the reservation needs in the parks. But we started out at Wabadonia Park with camping and shelter reservations. Uh, one, because um, prompted by um, the vacancy in our caretaker position and the need to, to bring this um, online and manage it better. Uh, but two, even with our new caretaker on board now, um, this will be expanded uh, to the county park system as a whole. So uh, first of all, we are able to uh, use this software um, and integrate it right into the county website. So if you go to the county website, and as I mentioned, uh, still being built out, but we started with the uh, the campsites first um, and then started to work on reservations uh, for the shelters, et cetera, in the parks. Uh, but here you can see what it looks like on our website for Wabadonia Park and the camping. Uh, you can go in, you can look at the details, an online map comes up to show you where the campsite is. Uh, there's photos uh, that we're continuing to add, but photos of each of the sites so you can get a feeling for what the campsite looks like or the shelter looks like. Um, and then over on the right hand side here, you can see that um, very customizable for us. Uh, we can set kind of reservation limits and rules and, and um, check in and check out time. But from the user side, they can go in, uh, pick a park, uh, pick a time for the reservation, et cetera, provide our details. This for us also gets around, um, you know, uh, phone messages and not understanding or getting correct contact information. Um, or correct dates. And, and so it's uh, user driven. In other words, they, they put in all the reservation details. Um, as I mentioned, we've been working on this for a while and, and one of the hitches was the payment process. Uh, this, this online system that we're using 
very flexible. It has a lot of different payment gateways. The one we're currently using just because that's, um, we had it set up for other reasons is PayPal. Um, but we do, and we've been talking with the treasurer department, treasurer's department uh, as well. Um, we're looking to expand that so that there's um, additional uh, payment gateways, if you will, uh, of, of which one is the, the one that the county treasurer uses for, for online payment as well. So the software is very flexible in that, in that way. Um, you're probably interested in, in kind of how we pay for the software. So we, there's, there's two ways we can do it on a flat fee kind of basis or a commission basis right now, based on the number of reservations we take, um, the usage, et cetera, um, we're set up to pay on a commission basis. So it's 1.5% on each of the reservations. Um, and you can see here the percent com commission actually decreases at certain intervals when we receive more reservations. Um, and then we just, we don't, uh, that doesn't um, per se, it, it's paid separately independently, if you will, of the reservations or the revenue coming in. So it's, a, it's an expense uh, that we have uh, expense to an expense account, if you will. So it uh, comes out separately. Um, I know this is a lot to look at, but this is just kind of the, um, the, the way the reservations are, are listed, we can put it in a calendar format or a listing. Uh, this is showing, for example, we can sort and uh, look at, you know, just all the reservations that we have for Wabadonia Park, for instance, camping, um, and get uh, get all those date reservations and who reserved it, etc. Um, we can also show it as a calendar, which is very useful for our caretakers when they want to have a quick glance at. Um, what the reservation schedule looks like to, you know, prepare or clean the shelters or uh, set up for the campers, etc. Um, the reservation forms are very customizable as well. So from our end, this is the back end uh, user, but we can customize it, um, which was one of the issues working through our golf course software was the custom customization process really this is very flexible and designed to cover all kinds of reservations so everything from you know picnic areas to camping to shelter reservation etc we can set all kinds of um, uh, rules if you will so how long the shelter can be rented uh, when checkout time is um, we can uh, gather all like I said all their personal details uh, we can make some of it required and some of it optional um, Etc. So this is just kind of an example of, of the different fields that we can we can set. Um, another really nice feature, which is fairly common, but uh, this is very user friendly. Uh, so our ordinance specifies some of the um, the pricing or our fee structure, uh, and some of that's based on the size of user groups and stuff. So we can set that. We also uniquely have you know the difference between resident and non-resident. Um, so again, the software from the back end user standpoint, very flexible. We can set up all these uh, uh, default conditions, if you will, uh, for pricing, um, resident, non-resident, um, number of users, et cetera. Um, and likewise, there's a lot of options to fit our, our time model. So again, if we have a checkout date, uh, this also comes in very handy with our HH Peters Youth Camp. So if we uh, we need time in between user groups to clean and, and sanitize and things like that, uh, so we can customize um, that as well. The intervals between uh, that goes with the campsites as too, which is very important to you know avoid any overlap, etc. So we can set some of those rules uh, with our time models in 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 into um, into the software. Uh, Everybody then receives a confirmation email automatically. So once they do their reservation, as you would, whoops, as you would uh, anticipate, they get a confirmation email uh, and that's sent directly. And it has uh, some of the, you know, um, conditions or regulations also that are included and we continue to, to modify that. But this e information gets emailed directly to them once they um, submit payment. Which I guess is another thing I should say. You know, uh, one of the things that we're really pushing to do everything now through the online system. 
in the past, we've uh, we've had a little bit of a hybrid, and so we've had some walk-on. Um, we're not eliminating, particularly with camping, we're not eliminating walk-on, but if they do walk on and want to reserve a site, um, we're going to direct them to do it through the online reservation. So they still would not, um, you know, work with directly, I mean, they could work with our caretaker to do it through the online system, but they wouldn't, for instance, uh, pay cash and, and reserve a campsite with a walk-on basis, which we had accommodated in the past. And this is just all together more secure, uh, better tracking. Um, and so, uh, therefore, we're really pushing everybody, even if they are a walk-on, which we won't eliminate, uh, they need to do it through the through the online system, which also then can track so we don't have um, duplication and reservations or overlap or, or confusion in that way. Um, we're still working on the customizable reports, but there are a lot of options. And for instance, this is one, like I said earlier, you can uh, I'll put just those that are uh, Wabadonia camping, for instance, and you can see all the usernames and their contact information. So if our caretaker would need to get a hold of them for any reason, they didn't show up, or um, maybe they are on the wrong site or whatever, he can verify that against uh, one of these reports. Same goes with shelters, et cetera. Um, the one part that I said we're still working on is we're trying to get the reports we need to um, continue to report to, to this committee, NRC, with our financials and stuff. So that's a work in progress as far as getting that uh, updated and in a format that we can then pass on to finance to do those uh, monthly revenue reports. Um, but that that should all be doable, just, just a work in progress. Um, and then lastly, we wanted to make sure that uh, this could be done mobile. So uh, that's, that's another option or uh, aspect that we're doing. There is a the, the mobile aspect of this. And um, we're continuing to work on that, improve that mobile application. One of the things, like I said, for, for walk-ons, particularly for camping, uh, we wanna faci facilitate this with our, with our caretaker now so that uh, hopefully he can have, um, you know, a handheld um, uh, uh, tablet or something that he can assist people making a reservation if they're a walk-on um, or just, have it in the field with him to check on reservations or uh, who's who's at what site, et cetera. Um, but this goes across the board with with shelter res reservations, et cetera. So we're making sure that um, we're mobile co compatible. The one challenge we have, uh, particularly at Wabadonia, is the uh, the Wi-Fi reception is is terrible. It's um, non-existent and so making it truly mobile is a little bit challenging out there uh, it's a little bit better at some of the other parks um, so we're continuing to work on that it might be a situation where uh, our, our caretaker is kind of hardwired at, at this at his house uh, it might be a situation in the short term that he has to use that until we can figure out um, better wi-fi reception for him to be in the field and, and use a tablet but um, again, all things to work on, but huge strides. We've been trying to work towards this for three years um, and it's, it's been working great. Uh, I think on the first slide I show, shared, but uh, we've had it live since um, mid-June. So June 17th, I think we took our first reservation. Uh, and there obviously are a few transition hiccups, but really it's been going very smoothly. And um, so we're looking to expand that. So we're building out the website now uh, we haven't made all the other park shelter reservations live yet, or we just started to do that. So I think Covered Bridge is online now, um, and we're working to do that with all the parks as far as uh, shelters and picnic areas and et cetera. The other one thing I'll mention, because it came up with pickleball, uh, if we were to ever you know, make reservable courts, et cetera, we can set it all up and not make it live until we want it. So we can, we can do that prep work. Um, and then if needed, we can, we can just basically turn it on and make it live. Uh, and to our earlier discussion, you know, right now, I, I don't anticipate any kind of reservation fee or anything. If it ever came to that though, we can do reservations basically at no fee or a fee. Um, so all that pricing option is, is, uh, or, um, is very adjustable. So, so uh, thank, I appreciate the time uh, that that's all I had. I, definitely welcome any questions um and and if 
you had any concerns or other comments, but um, work in progress, a huge step forward though for us. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to how it's gonna improve our efficiencies. So Andrew, I have a question. Um, when you say mobile applications, does that mean there's an app you can get to have on your like iPhone or something? There is an app. Um, we haven't gotten quite that far, but there is an app available so we can get it set up that they're that they can do it through an app as well. Um, but it also I should maybe say right now what we're working on is making it mobile friendly so that the uh, page layout and everything uh, should come up, you know, on on a phone or on a tablet. Uh, so you can, you know, access and read it all, etc. So one is mobile friendly, but but there is an app and um, we'll, we'll be looking at uh, trying to transition to have that available as well. And there's probably like a link like on the county website that they can just yeah we as i as i mentioned it's fully integrated so it's on our department website but we also worked with the uh, register of deeds and, and specifically ron void uh so it's right on our front page right now um one of the three major icons on the main county website is uh the reservations and that's been going great it, it uh, really helps people find it um so yes you can just Go right onto the county website and, and find the link right on the main page right now. So. I think this is where we're going in the future. I mean, we want good use of the parks, and this is part of the whole situation. I guess personally, I'm against cash. That's a difficult situation. Always causes problems. I've dealt with that in the past. So this sounds like the problem that I have is the Wi-Fi <laughs> being on the bed zone, you know, so swapping out is just a, and Wabadonia Park, is that a problem too? Maybe yeah. Problem. Yeah, Wabadonia Wab 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 Park definitely is a challenge for the Wi-Fi right now. If uh, So in this interim, you know, when people have done walk-on and we have the caretaker walk through the reservation systems or trying to get get them to use it through the online. Um, it is a little inconvenient right now. They have to leave the park to get re Wi-Fi reception. They don't have to go far, but to the top of the hill essentially. Um, so it, it's a little inconvenient. We're gonna try and work on how we can boost the Wi-Fi at Wabadonia, but I know we've tried in the past and it's it's extremely challenging because we're low in a, in a valley there. But I would say, you know, 90% uh, you, you know, it's pre pre reservation. So people are doing it, you know, prior to arrival and, and from home and stuff. So uh, it hasn't, it, it's a little inconvenient, but hasn't been a huge issue. Uh, and we have better service at some of the other parks, but it, that's always going to be a challenge. Yes. So, well, and, and, plan, you have access. If you don't plan and it's walk on, then it makes things more difficult, correct? Yeah. And, and I said, again, I, I didn't want to eliminate the uh, walk-on ability. You know, if we have open sites, I didn't want to prevent anybody from being able to walk on and, and take a site if available. Um, one thing we're seeing is that certainly the sites are getting reserved more in um, earlier. And so I think, you know, pushing this direction will be really good. Uh, to your point though, Barb, too, on the cash, we've always been trying to get away from that as well. So. Um, getting the reservation through the system is, is much better. It's uh, credit card payment. Uh, and there's different, like I said, options to do that. So it's a lot more secure, less, less money transfer, handling, recording, uh, monitoring, et cetera. Um, and we get reports for all of the, the payments that come through and um, trying to integrate that with the, the finance system, but uh, that, that will, that will come with time, but yeah, a lot, lot more secure and, um, uh, definitely one thing too, much more efficient. So any questions, other questions for Andrew? Then we'll move on to donation of land, environmental corridor and department project area for county park along Yulio Creek, village of Grafton. Yeah, thank you. Um, just, uh, let's see. I wanted to share a photo here. I'm not finding it at the moment. Um, I will one second and I will share that. So um, 
Uh, some of you may recall, um, but we've been working with um, the landowner of, uh, well, several landowners along Uleo Creek for our restoration uh, since probably 2010, all along there are private landowners. Um, but in particular, um, one landowner that we refer to as the gateway parcel. So this is um, technically in the village of Grafton. Um, the parcel is an outlot of the development where uh, Water Street Brewery is, the gas station, um, and the two hotels, uh, Hampton Inn and Suites, um, and, and the other hotel that are there. So that subdivision and outlot was dedicated along Uleo Creek and for probably the last, well, uh, yeah, since we started restoration work probably in 2011, we've been working with that landowner. Um, who also owns the gas station uh, property and, and manages the gas station. Um, and so uh, they've been allowing us to do our, our restoration work. We had a memorandum to do the remeandering of the, of the creek in that area and some of the habitat improvements. Um, they've been a really great partner for, for us on, on that project. Uh, one, of, one of several landowners that have been great. Um, so he approached us um, uh, a little while back, actually prior, prior to um, the pandemic and, and so forth about the possibility of uh, donating that land to the county. Um, they, like I said, currently own and manage the gas station. Um, they're, they're, they're two brothers that own the property uh, and they developed, uh, sold some of the uh, development to, for, uh, like I said, Water Street Brewery and the hotels. Uh, but anyway, that what they remain left, uh, one of the brothers is currently still owning and operating the gas station, but they're looking to potentially phase out of that operation at some point in the near future, not immediately. Um, but they also have this outlaw holding. Um, and uh, again, it's not developable. It, it's uh, floodplain, uh, wetlands. Um, like I said, they've been a great partner in our restoration. Um, and so um, they approached us with the possibility of uh, donating the property to the county for a county park. Uh, it is all environmental corridor, which uh, is uh, listed in our, our county park and open space plan, um, and as well as uh, our county project area along Uleo Creek. Um, and so uh, again, they, they thought we would have an interest and um, and I'm willing to donate it. Um, I'm not finding the map that I wanted to, but I'm gonna see if I can share one here anyway, um, just so you can see the property. Is it all east of the service road? Is that kind of how it is? Uh, correct, all east of the service road. And now I'm, I'm sharing the map here. Hopefully I'll just get it resized. Um, yeah, so it's um, approximately 10 acres or so, um, all east of the, of the um, what's, what's Gateway Road, which is why we call it the Gateway prop Property. So uh, this is off the interchange with I-43 just to the west, um, Highway 60 or County Highway um, V at going east. Um, this is uh, Schmidt's... Um, off to the east is the Schmidt uh, cement concrete plant. Uh, like I said, uh, these are the gas stations here, uh, as well as Water Street Brewery and the two hotels. Um, and so uh, this is the parcel. Um, like I said, majority is in the floodplain, a vast majority uh, wetlands as well. Um, and you can see all the restoration work that we've done. Um, in this case, uh, all the plantings and stuff since 2014. So um, over 700 trees and, and their stream remeandering. So a lot of restoration work by the county has been done uh, using uh, you know, federal and state grants, et cetera. Um, so yeah, this is a, a really nice opportunity. The thing that we like about it is one, you know, we've been, we've been, uh, the county has invested time and, and energy into the restoration activities here. Uh, managing invasive species, um, and we we use this actually freak, very frequently. Um, we give a, a tour with the Natural Resource Foundation every year 
um, as one example, we give them a tour annually, a tour annually to the Natural Resource Foundation members. Um, and this is one of the sites we take them to because it's accessible and we can talk about some of the restoration activities that the department and the county are working on. Um, the other part that we like about it though is um, really gives us a, a, a public uh, face uh, for some of this restoration work that's accessible. So, you know, we could envision, um, you know, users of um, the hotels or Water Street Brewery, you know, being able to, to access the site in the future and um, uh, learn both passively, like through educational signage, but also actively, uh, you know, we use for tours, et cetera. So, um, so uh, he's, he's very interested in uh, moving forward. He, uh, I wanted to, to discuss it with the committee and, and get it in front of you first, but uh, he would welcome the opportunity to come and talk with the committee too, if so desired. Um, but yeah, he's, he's interested in, in, in trying to help facilitate this uh, and, and add it as a county park. He has a real interest too in, in what I just mentioned as far as um, you know, the public access and the restoration work that we're doing to kind of highlight that. And, um, and like I said, it, it doesn't serve any, um, you know, needs for their, you know, development portfolio, if you will. So, so I don't know if there's any questions or comments or concerns or. Well, that's great. I think it would be great if you could come talk at one of our meetings. If we have assets for Dr. Kelman, you can have that, especially across from the hotels. If you've stayed in hotels, you can't go anywhere, and there'd right. be a park across right. the street, would yeah. be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we envisioned is, you know, I like I said, it is floodplain. Uh, you know, many times a year it's walk dry and walkable in areas, and that's why we do the tours. But we would also envision, you know, maybe adding a boardwalk trail system. So. Just like you said, uh, users of Water Street Brewery or the hotels could take a little walk in there, um, do some passive education with signage. So I think it's a real good opportunity. And, and yes. we see that sign that's there, and people don't really know, you know, much about it. They just see it, but if there be a trail of the future, often people who stay at the hotels want to take a morning run or so. You'd have somewhere to go other than pavement. Yes. I think it would be an asset to Ozarki County. Yeah, I agree. And we've also had discussions with the hotel and Water Street Brewery and, of course, the, uh, the gas station because they're the owners of the property. And everybody is really supportive of it. So I can see some future partnerships there in the future, um, just, just for the very reasons you guys mentioned. Um, they seem to be very supportive. Any other questions for Andrew on this? And we'll move on to the management, financial, and informational reports. We've got planning and parks reports. Should we take these individually or? Uh, sure, I can, I can just try and quickly go through them. Uh, I just wanted to provide a, a little bit of updates on, on some of these items. So I, I can just quickly um, mention them. Um, on the, uh, the capital projects that the department's working on, I uh, just wanted to give you an update, particularly on uh, covered bridge. So obviously you approve the, the bid and in, in construction of the uh, bathroom shelter facility out there. So we're moving very quickly on that, um, working with the, uh, the contractor that's been selected, getting all of the signed documents and permits in place, uh, uh, permits on the, the pout system, et cetera, working with the town of Cedarburg. In fact, I was at a town of Cedarburg uh, meeting uh, last night uh, for the approval of our uh, holding tank out at the site. So um, things are going really well. Uh, our surveyor is working to survey the property uh, as well for um, the, the shoreland permit requirements. Uh, so everything is going well um, and uh, we're looking forward to, to breaking ground as soon as possible. I know the contractor wants to get started as soon as possible. He's already done some materials orders um, and is looking to get on the ground as, as quickly as possible. And um, we're just working, like I said, a final, final approval paperwork on, on some of the, um, the permitting and, and uh, um, pouts agreements uh, with the town, which got approved last night, by the way. So, so Cover Bridge is going really well. Uh, we're starting to move forward on the shelter design and engineering for Lions Den Gorge. We've been doing some survey work out there. 
uh, this past uh, couple weeks um, just to get all the wetlands surveyed in um, and, uh, and kind of the benchmarks for where the building will be sited, which right now I'll, I'll share uh, some preliminary designs when we get those. Um, right now though, the, the building uh, looks like the, the best location will be sited um, on the north side of the park road, kind of back by the um, circular turnaround. Um, it looks like the, uh, the best site. We're working through a couple of other issues. We have, we're working with We Energies on um, a quote for the electrical service to the park because we currently don't have electrical service into Lion's Den. So that's ongoing and we're working through uh, that engineering with them, with We Energies. Uh, and we're working on the pouts issues as well. Uh, uh, so supplying the septic that will be necessary. So design and engineering ongoing at Lion's Den and I certainly will have uh, shortly some conceptual uh, plans to share with you on that design as well. Uh, very similar in nature though to Covered Bridge. Um, ongoing work on the uh, maintenance facility for Hawthorne Hills. Uh, that, that's taken a little bit of a backseat just because we're, we're so um, busy with the Covered Bridge construction and, and we've wanted to ramp up uh, getting the Lion's Den shelter um, design uh, up to speed as well. So that one's taken a little back seat, back seat, but we have continued to work on the maintenance building uh, design and uh, with our architect CUNY. And um, uh, let's see. And then uh, lastly, uh, just at county board, you know, you authorized uh, some of the um, funding for ADA projects. And two of those are um, out at Hawthorne Hills. So one is for the golf course uh, upgrade of the bathrooms. So we'll start work on that design and engineering. Um, Conceptually, we envision that as a, a full addition onto the clubhouse uh, to accommodate it rather than a remodel of the existing bathrooms, which would, um, according to our architect, would be far more costly. So cheaper just to build on a new addition um, that'll come out kind of the front uh, area of the clubhouse. That's conceptually what we're looking at. And then the other is ADA improvements at HH uh, Peters Youth Camp. So again, there it's the bathrooms that uh, primarily need work, uh, although there's a few other uh, items, but um, those those we are envisioning to do the remodel to make ADA. So all of that, those are the, the big ones, all that's ongoing. And then lastly, um, uh, we had uh, county approved capital funding to work on um, projects at Lions Den Gorge. So we've been working with our highway department, uh, trying to get uh, Lions Den Gorge uh, parking expansion um, designed and, and um, for implementation and we'll be working through the necessary permitting there uh, that should coincide with our work on the bathroom shelter. And then also we have a WISC core team that's currently with us, um, conservation core team. Um, and uh, we envision, uh, they're here with us for two more weeks. We envision uh, one of those uh, two weeks, uh, they'll start actually uh, disassembling uh, the overlook at the Fish and Wildlife. Um, property so that we can um, uh, get that start start the process of uh, disassembly of that so that we can work towards um, the capital project which was putting in new floating uh, pier and improvements to the boardwalk so very very quick uh, summary but that's where we are on all the capital projects um, so I don't know if there's any questions on that at all if not, I can just uh, roll on to uh, Clay Bluffs. Um, I, I think I mentioned really all I, I wanted to say at the county board yesterday, but we still are waiting on stewardship decisions um, for uh, the, the funding that the Ozaki Washington Land Trust applied to. Um, and we continue to work through the process of finalizing all of our federal grants as far as the uh, specific and contract documents and stuff. So we have a um, monthly meeting with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, on, on several of those uh, federal grants to continue to work on those, um, those documents and uh, contracts. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we'll, we'll hear shortly on the stewardship funding and, um, and then can kind of uh, proceed. We still envision that a closing date would probably be um, early 22 at at the you know most optimistic it would be probably early 22 at this point. Um, so that's that's on, on Clay Bluffs. Uh, 
just real quick, I just wanted to follow up on, uh, I, I think I talked with you a couple uh, meetings ago about some part new partnerships and one was with Colders um, right there on Uleo Creek. Uh, so they did a, a special um, promotional thing for Earth Day for us. Uh, and um, we got a donation of $1,500 that'll go towards uh, trees and tree planting. Um, they would prefer, uh, would like us to, to use it out at Uleo Creek. And so another, you know, good use of uh, uh, either way, but uh, with the gateway property. So that being right across from their, their Colders facility, they really like the idea and um, uh, are looking to do this uh, as an annual thing for Earth Day and try and expand it so that uh, they can even donate more dollars in the future. So, so that was good. We did receive that donation from them. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to mention a uh, fairly uh, big designation and significance. Um, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, just recently announced within the last couple of weeks um, that, uh, that the official designation, um, I guess they've changed the official name now too, but it was the Mid Lake Michigan National Marine Sanctuary. Um, but that designation uh, is moving forward. Um, that, that sanctuary, that National Marine Sanctuary will cover uh, 962 square miles of Lake Michigan. Um, and it encompasses 36 shipwrecks um, in counties of Kiwani, Manitowoc, Sheboygan, and Ozaki. And for Ozaki, our portion is essentially um, uh, from just south of city of Port Washington up to the northern county line. So it, it does not, uh, the current boundaries does not include the, the southern part of the county uh, at this time. Um, but that's moving forward. There is a public comment period that's out there right now. I think it closes in uh, a few days, maybe uh, 10, 10 or so days. Uh, but uh, that designation has been um, probably five or so, so years in the uh, coming um, uh, kind of on and off again. But uh, th that is moving for forward with uh, approvals from uh, the state and, and feds. So that's really exciting. And it's going to be, um, I think, once things get underway, I think it'll be really good for, for tourism and um, probably visitation for the parks as well. So um, yeah, something, something to look forward to. I think, so like I said, I think it becomes, uh, I think they'll finalize designation or it becomes official uh, probably in a month or so, you know, pending, pending any other public comment on the, um, on the designation. They have had many multiple public comment periods. So this is kind of the, the last uh, round, I guess, uh, before final designation. So um, I think that's that's all I wanted to touch on as far as updates, unless there are any questions on financials or anything else. I, I just would say the golf courses are doing really great. Again, the conditions have been good. The play has been good. Um, we're uh, hopefully improving uh, the situation with our restaurant and service there. Um, just uh, it's been a challenge with staffing, but Hopefully we're getting that squared away and um, yeah, revenues are up. So that that's good. And we have seen an uptick in uh, park revenues too, particularly with the online reservation system. So. Any questions? Any, any update on Vermont? Uh, stair, staircase, stairway? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're continuing to monitor the situation. In fact, I just got an update from our contractor yesterday. Uh, he's still, what is recommending to wait. Uh, we've also had UWC grant out there and, and same thing. So uh, mainly we're, we're waiting on a technical uh, aspect, but uh, I will say, and I know that uh, we talked about this supervisor Mingle, but um, we are also doing a simultaneously uh, campaign, uh, fundraising campaign. Uh, part of that is um, to really serve our match needs uh, for one of our, our, our second coastal management grant, our phase two coastal management grant. But our contractor is under contract and he will continue. He did start phase two of the staircase construction. You probably saw uh, another landing and so forth uh, being constructed, but then we put it on hold. Um, there is some subsidence out at Vermont with the, um, the high lake levels that were there and then receding and then um, dry conditions this spring actually you would think would be really good, but because of some of the winter activity, particularly slumping and, 
and so forth. Uh, we're kind of waiting for things to subside a little bit. So actually we need a little bit of rain, which we've started to get now um, to just see how things settle out. So we're mainly waiting to restart on phase two. We did start, but we're waiting to, waiting to restart uh, based on conditions. And right now uh, our contractor is still recommending to wait. And so we don't really have a, an exact timeline, but we're still um, hoping to have construction done this year. Uh, we did we did extend our coastal management grant um, as well, just to accommodate that. Um, but the contractor is under under a contract and uh, has been monitoring actively. And uh, same time, we're doing the fundraising campaign, uh, of which those funds will help uh, pay for uh, or or provide for the match for that that uh, coastal management grant and some of the uh, some of the other amenities like the uh, restoration that we hope to do at the site. Uh, and also kind of the brick paver path that is part of our fundraising campaign. So are, are you still planning to send out that fundraising letter? We are now. Yeah, we got through a, a, a slug of things and also just kind of working with the contractor, but we are planning to send that out. Um, and particularly in light of uh, our online donation uh, system being up and running better now too, um, we, we do intend to, to send that out. So yes. Okay. I think it would be helpful, Andrew, if you could include in that letter the information that you and I talked about, about what, what the delay is and the reason for the delay. And maybe, I don't know if it might be helpful to include that table of the breakdown or just, you know, maybe a simpler breakdown of the breakdown of the grants. Sure. Um, just so people understand where the funding is coming from and what the 30,000 is for, because there's obviously some confusion about that. Right. And, and it is, it is a little confusing. And part of that, I will say, um, so, and, and we've talked about this on, on uh, email and so forth, but so part of the confusion with the funding is, um, when our phase two coastal management grant actually got awarded, which was six months later than we anticipated. And so therefore some of the match that we had anticipated using from our existing grants, stewardship, et cetera, were no longer eligible because we can only use match during the, the grant period. That the delay in getting the contract and everything was not on our part. It was just NOAA, NOAA approval, um, some, some conditions for, for NEPA review, et cetera. Um, it's not atypical. You know, they always say that all that will be done and they'll award by July. We didn't receive the grant award until the very end of December. And obviously from a timing standpoint, that's confusing but uh, or uh, complicating. So the fundraising campaign also is to bolster that because we, we had uh, eligible match when both we applied a couple years back uh, and, and, and started the project. We had eligible match, but now that match is no longer usable because it falls outside that grant period. So that is the complication. So so now we're trying to, uh, to fundraise to come up with the balance of the match that's required for the coastal management grant, which um, it's all wrapped together. That project includes the staircase, the restoration, uh, the, the brick paver path or, or, or an improved path there. So, um, but, you know, tech, technically we have the contractor under contract for the amount to finish the staircase. Yeah, residents don't, some residents don't understand that. And so I, I get it. It's very, yeah, very so I, think just, I think it would be helpful in that fundraising letter just to make that clear that the continuing construction is not dependent on fundraising that money. Yep. You know, and it should make it clear that it's for technical reasons, soil conditions, all of that. Yeah, I can definitely do that. And I, I might word it slightly differently because I, I also don't want to... Uh, uh, prevent donations from coming in because we we do we will still need them. So it's it's that balance between saying yes we are proceeding with the project and and uh, and will be done, uh, but also that we we are looking to, to fulfill some of our our funding needs. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. I I definitely will, and I will uh, share that letter with you too before it goes out. We we will have to do a little rewriting uh, given the the recent circumstances, but yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes.
That's it for Andrew. Next meeting date is August 5th. And then I look for a motion for a gentleman. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the round is good. Send your distance. Yeah. Thank you. See you, Andrew. Yep. Yeah.